Hey there, welcome back to BAPCH IGNU. We are your go-to channel for all the things in IGNU BA Psychology Honours. Whether you are embarking on a brand new journey with IGNU or in need of some last minute exam prep or even just seeking some clarity on those tricky topics, you are in the right place. And if you are joining us for the very first time, a huge warm welcome to you. Thank you for tuning in and do us a solid favor by hitting that subscribe button, please. That way you won't lose us in the sea of YouTube videos. All right, now let's dive right into it, shall we? As you know, this series, we are discussing BPCC 102, that is biopsychology. Today, we are talking about the fourth unit, the peripheral system. In this episode, we are going to look into cranial nerves, spinal nerves, and the peripheral nervous system. Let's get started. So, cranial nerves, they are like the information highways in your head. They are a set of 12 nerve pairs that come directly from your brain. These nerves help your brain communicate with different parts of your head and neck like your eyes, ears, mouth and muscles. Each cranial nerve has a specific job like controlling your senses or muscles or movement in those areas. They play a crucial role in helping you see, hear, test, move your face and do many other things like you know with your head and neck. Now the number one is olfactory nerve. So this nerve is all about the sense of smell. It helps you detect the delicious aroma of your favorite food or warn you about that not so pleasant smell. The second is optic nerve. This nerve is like your body's camera. It takes all your images you see with your eyes and then sends them to your brain so you can make sense of the world around you. Okay. So the third is oculomotor nerve. So this one controls your eye movement. It's responsible for helping your eyes move around so you can look at things from different angles. So fourth is trochlear nerve. Similar to the oculomotor nerve, this nerve also plays a role in eye movement. It helps control the movement of your eyeballs. So on the number fifth, we have trigeminal nerve. So think of this nerve as a sensation expert. It's in charge of filling things on your face when, like, when you touch your skin or even chew your food. So number six is abducens nerve, another eye superhero if you would say. So this nerve helps your eye move outward, looking, you know, allowing you to look left and right without any problems. Now seventh, let's look into the facial nerve. As the name suggests, this nerve controls your facial expressions. Okay, so it's the region that you can smile, frown or even raise your eyebrows. And the number eight, we have vestibular cochlear nerve. So this nerve is all about hearing and balance. It helps you hear sound and keep your balance when you are walking or moving around. And number nine, we have glossopharyngeal nerve. Okay, so this nerve is involved in your throat and mouth. It helps with swallowing, tasting and even some sensory information from the back of your throat. And number 10 is vagus nerve. So this nerve is like the body's communicator. It's in charge of sending messages to and from your brain to control things like your heart rate, digestion and even your voice. Number 11 is accessory nerve. Okay, so this nerve is a bit of a helper. It uh, works with other nerves to control your neck and soldier muscles allowing you to move your head and shoulders. On number 12, we have hypoglossal nerve. Okay, so last but not the least, this nerve controls your tongue movement. It's, you know, what lets you talk, swallow or stick your tongue out. Okay, so those are our 12 cranial nerves. Now let's look into the spinal nerve. So spinal nerve, they are like the wires that come out of your computer or TV. Okay, just imagine a wire coming out of those things. They help your brain send and receive messages to and from different parts of your body. You have a bunch of these spinal nerves running down your spine. Okay, so these nerves, is, they branch out all over your body, making sure your brain can control everything and get information back. Unlike cranial nerves, they don't have any much, uh, what do you say, special names? Yeah, but they are named based on where they come from in your spine. Okay, so there are 31 of these spinal nerves in total. 
they come out from different levels of your backbone which are called vertebrae here and this is how they are named okay so the one that come from the neck area they are called cervical nerves and are numbered c1 to c8 okay so the second one the one from the upper back they are called thoracic nerve and they are numbered t1 to t12 the ones from the lower back are called lumbar nerves and they are numbered l1 to l5 the ones from your bottom of your spine are called sacral nerves and are numbered s1 to s5 and the last one it is called the coccygeal nerve and it comes from the very bottom of your spine near the tailbone yes so these spinal nerves are like the messengers that help your brain control and feel things all over your body they are named based on where they come from in your spine okay so now let's move to the peripheral nervous system so the peripheral nervous system is like a network of nerves that connects your brain and spinal cord to the rest of your body so these nerves help you feel things move your muscles and control automatic stuff like your heart beating or digestion so it's like the bridge that lets your brain communicate with everything else in your body making sure it all works together smoothly okay so this peripheral nervous system it has two main parts somatic nervous system okay and autonomic nervous system so the somatic nervous system is like the controller for your voluntary movements it helps you do things on purpose like moving your arms and legs the system has two main nerve nerve cells sensory neurons and motor neurons so sensory neuron they are like the messengers that bring information from your senses you know like touch sight and hearing to your brain they bring the information from all these senses to your brain and spinal cord they tell your brain what's happening in the outside world okay so the other one is motor neurons these are like the messengers that take command from your brain and spinal cord to your muscles telling them to move okay so they make your voluntary movements happen like when you reach out for a cookie or kicking a soccer ball yes so and also when something happens that you don't even have to think about it you know like quickly pulling your hand away from something hot it's called reflex a reflexes are like automatic reaction to keep you safe there are cranial reflexes okay so that's like quick reaction that happens right in your brain and the second is spinal reflexes it happens a bit down lower in your spinal cord okay and uh, somatic reflexes are all about the movement of your skeletal muscles the one that are attached to your bones for example when a doctor taps your knee and your leg just kicks out right so that's a somatic reflex it's a quick automatic response so the somatic nervous system helps you move your muscle and purpose and reflexes are quite automatic reaction that happen when your brain or spinal cord senses something needs an immediate response okay now let's look at the autonomic nervous system so think of this as your body's automatic control system it has it handles thing you don't have to consciously think about like your heart beating your stomach digesting food or your body sweating when it's hot okay so the autonomic nervous system it has two main teams sympathetic division and parasympathetic division so sympathetic division it revs your body for action like when you are facing something stressful or exciting you know it makes your heart beat faster diverts blood to your muscle and prepares you to deal with challenge the other is parasympathetic division so this team is like more like you know calm down crew okay it helps your body relax and return to a resting state after a stressful situation it uh, slows your heart rate aids in digestion and also keeps thing running smoothly when you are not in a high stress situation so both teams sympathetic and parasympathetic they are like opposite when one is active the other tends to be less active they work together like a seesaw you know to keep your body balanced 
So basically the autonomic nervous system, it is all about controlling the automatic stuff in your body like heart rate, digestion and stress responses. And it does this through the teamwork of sympathetic and parasympathetic division. So let's look quickly for the functions of sympathetic division. Okay. So the sympathetic division, as we discussed earlier, is your body's emergency response team. So it is located middle in the middle part of your spine and its main job is to help you deal with stressful situation like when you're angry, scared or facing a challenge. So here's what it does. First one, fight or flight. Okay. So it's the responsible for the fight and flight response. So when you're angry or scared, you need to escape from a danger. Okay. So this division kicks into action. It helps you get ready for action by increasing your heart rate, making your muscle tense and getting your body ready to deal with the stress. So the other one is maintaining normal functions. So normally when you are not in a stressful situation, it keeps your body working smoothly. It helps maintain things like muscle tone and blood pressure. Okay. And also there is selective activation. So not all body parts are affected by the sympathetic division. For example, it slows down things like digestion and waste elimination because those aren't a priority during a stressful situation right so however in extreme anxiety you might feel the urge to empty your bladder or bowels and the other is switching off so one once the stressful situation ends the activities of sympathetic division are replaced by parasympathetic division which helps your body calm down and return to its normal state okay so let's look into the function of parasympathetic division real quick so it's like your body's rest and digest team okay it's located both on the top and bottom of your spine working alongside the sympathetic division so this uh, division is all about keeping things running smoothly when you are not in stress or in danger okay so also the parasympathetic division helps your body recharge and regain the energy that the sympathetic division used up during the stress response. It's like, you know, replenishing your body's resources. All right. So with this, we have reached the end of this video. But before we say goodbye, let's recap quickly on the topic we discussed today. This namely, we discussed cranial nerves and the 12 pairs and the spinal nerves and the peripheral nervous system yes so our next video is going to be the fifth unit but hey before we part ways i want to extend a shout out to each and every one of you for watching your support means the world to us and uh, if you have any questions or you want to share your thoughts don't hold back drop your comments in the section below or send us a dm on our social media channels we are all ears okay and of course Please, please, please do us a solid favor. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and smash that subscribe button so you won't miss a single moment of our content. Okay. So if you want real, uh, you know, notes and up updates, follow us on Instagram or just DMS again. So until then, remember to stay curious, stay engaged and always keep in mind that you got this.